What it do? Bad Sound Crew. Hey, man, listen, today I'm here to talk about the biggest can crushes in the UFC. These are my top five picks for the highest kind of notoriety, biggest name value can crushes in the UFC. And I thought about this video because I was low key considering making a video about Sean O'Malley and his run to the title. He did have a bit of a Mickey Mouse run, but he does have some very good wins. And the guys on this list, there's no such thing, okay? These guys, if you get signed to the UFC, you're 7-3, you're and three, you get signed randomly, you're on like a two-fight win streak, you're cooked because you're getting fed to one of these guys, all right, dude? And let's start off straight away, middleweight division. I'm putting Bo Nickel on this list. Bo Nickel, I mean, this guy, not only the fact that he's fighting absolute fucking nobodies, but it's also the fact that he gets hyped up for it. He gets glazed completely for it. There's literally videos out there of UFC champions. Oh my god, this guy's overhand to a double leg. Bro, this, like, are we gonna let this guy slide on his podcast talking about DDP and Whitaker at easy work? You guys clown Ian Gary for making his video talking shit about Strickland versus DDP, which was cr very cringe and very gay. But Bo Nickel is literally on his podcast every single week talking about how easy work Strickland, Whitaker, Chemaev, DDP is. And his best win is who? Jamie Pickett, bruh. And he, <laughs> he struggled to take him the fuck down, dude. Is Eric Anders actually better than Bo Nickel? That is my question for you today. I mean, his next fight, I'm not joking, maybe one of the most pointless fights in UFC history. Do we really need to do Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage? Like, is that absolutely necessary to see? I don't think so. You know, this guy is fighting absolute cans. He's getting the treatment. I understand that he's 5-0, and but I feel like there's an easier way to kind of develop him without also pushing him down our throats, you know? That's my opinions on it. Bo Nickel definitely belongs on this list. Let's move on to a man that fought this weekend. I'm not going to lie. His shitness almost made me a fan of him. I'm not going to lie. Shamil the Blob Gaziev is like a favorite fighter of mine now after this weekend. I don't know where this dude came from. I don't know what pictures he has of Dana White to where he got a main event after one win on the prelims of 296. I'm loving it, dude. The fact that this guy has fought literally fucking nobody, got a main event, gassed out due to cardiac arrest in round two. I mean, the, I, I need another Gazi of main event. I, I want to, we need to feed him a couple of cans first. And when I say can crusher, you know, he's going to, you know, you're getting fed to Gazi of, that might get a little bit literal, bro. He might eat you for real, bro. So Gaziev, definitely a big can crusher. I'm hoping that he can bounce back. I'm sure he will bounce. He's very rotund, okay? Like a volleyball. <laughs> this guy's so fucking fat, bro. Oh, shit. Okay, let me get back on track. Ooh. <laughs> this guy's so fucking fat. Oh, okay. Anyways, Gaziev, definitely a can crusher. Like, he came in with the most padded record. If you looked into any of his fights, you knew not to pick him against Rosenstrike. And, yeah, I think they're definitely going to put him back on the diet of cans. They're going to feed him, like, Josh Parisian. They're going to feed him a couple of nobodies, get him a couple of wins, and hopefully we get another five-rounder with Shamil Gaziev because this is literally the funniest dude in the UFC. I cannot stop laughing when I look at this dude, so... Shamil Gaziev, he is my pick. He is number two on my list. Let's move on to one of the greatest can crushes currently going today, Terrence McKinney. This man has built a fucking legacy. This guy is putting up Michael Jordan numbers against UFC debuting opponents. This guy literally, like I said, if you're seven and three, you're eight and four, you go on a two fight win streak, the Dana White calls you for some reason, you're cooked, bro. You're getting fed to Terrence McKinney. That's it. If you're an American fighter with a positive record, you may be a Terrence McKinney's opponent, like next opponent. Like you got to get ready. You got you got to be in the gym ready because he might fight you next. Um, all jokes aside, I do like Terrence McKinney. He is a very good fighter, especially early on in fights. But I do think that the level of competition that he's fighting, going up and down, up and down, is not good for his development. You know, he's he gets two wins against debuting guys with no shot at beating him. Then he fights a killer and he gets murked. You know what I mean? I just think that's why he's kind of going two wins, one loss, two wins, one loss, two wins, two losses, right? I think they need to slowly build him up again, rebuild him if they want him to be a top contender because he does have a cool story. 
I've been a Terence McKinney glazer in the past. I'm not ashamed to say that. But yeah, he definitely qualifies as a can crusher in my opinion. And I'm going to tie him for third on my list with Paddy the fucking baddie, lad. I don't crush cans, mate. I crush fucking burgers and pizzas, lad, and fucking ice cream, lad. Paddy Pimblett is another can crushing lightweight prospect. So I'm going to put them side by side. I think they should fight each other, to be honest. But Paddy Pimblett definitely fits into that conversation. He's getting fed Tony Ferguson on a six fight losing streak. He's fighting Luigi Vendramini. That's a that's a real human being. You know what I'm saying? He's finding the Vargas dude in, in London who was on a losing streak in the UFC got put on like a co-main event. So Paddy Pimblet is another beneficiary of the can crushing methodology. This guy is getting fed absolute fucking nobodies. And now he's on a crazy win streak. They're going to have to give him a solid opponent next. I do think he's actually a pretty good fighter. I know I'm calling him a can crusher, but I just want to make that clear in this video. Being a can crusher does not make you a bad fighter. You know, you don't really, for the most part, get to choose who you fight when you're starting out in the UFC, right? And Dana White obviously wants to push all of these guys. He's going to give them matchups that they can probably win, right? And it's just their job to win, which is what they do. But that being said, you do have to look at their resumes and go, well, I can't really be sure how good this guy actually is. He's not fighting the level of competition that you want him to be fighting or the level that he's at. So Paddy Pimblett is a can crusher. I will give him that, especially in the UFC. But... I think he has potential to break out of that and be a decent, like, top 15 contender. I don't think he'll win the belt or anything, but I think he can be a top 15 contender uh, given the right matchup. So, Paddy Pimblett is my tied for third choice with Terrence McKinney. Let's move on. I've got two fighters left. One of these guys I feel very passionately about, pause, um, in terms of him being a can crusher and just being pissed off with the way that he fights. Carlos Olberg, dude. Carlos Olberg, I'm sick of this guy's fucking shit. Like I said in my praying on downfalls video, I'm praying that this guy runs into the wrong fucking can because I'm sick of this guy getting the easiest matchups in one of the shittiest divisions and calling out Dominic Reyes, dude. Leave Dominic Reyes the fuck alone, bro. Fight somebody else, dude. I'm sorry. Go fight Anthony Smith, bro. Go fight Kennedy and Zetriku, bro. Go fight Azamat Mirzakhanov, dude. What are you doing trying to fight Reyes? You know what you you know what you're fucking doing. You're a fucking scumbag, dude. You're a fucking dirtbag, dude. You know, bed, bed bedtime's a nice dude, by the way. That last video, I'm I'm gonna buy him a fucking house with my charity money, dude. But listen, Carlos Olberg, he is a scumbag for trying to fight Dominic Reyes. He is fighting absolute fucking nobodies, debuting guys, guys on KO losing streaks, just people that he should not be fighting. And it's so obvious what the UFC is doing. That's what makes it so frustrating. That's what makes me so passionate about seeing this guy get checked by somebody legit. You know, fight somebody at his level because he is a good fighter. I don't like pointless fights. And I think a lot of his fights recently have been pointless as fuck. Obviously, I understand rebuilding this guy after the loss to Nzechiku, but that time has passed. That was years ago, bro. That was years. Izzy has had like two title reigns in that time, bro. I think you can fight a ranked opponent. I think you'll be okay, bro. I think you can handle it, buddy. So, Carlos Olberg is my fourth place pick in this uh, list. There is one fighter left that, even though I like this guy, like I said, being a can crusher doesn't make you a bad fighter. It just reflects who you fought, the challenges you've taken, maybe the organizations that you've been in. And I think the biggest can crusher in the UFC today, like, that's going to be fighting in a huge spot very, very soon, that has a lot of question marks because of the people that he's fought, Michael Venom Page. First of all, he trains with KSI. I want him to lose. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, dude, Michael Venom Page. There is so many question marks around this guy and this Kevin Holland fight. I almost want to pick him to beat Kevin Holland. I think Kevin Holland is enough of a fucking goofball in terms of his mentality to fuck this up. Like, Kevin Holland should beat Michael Venom Page. He can wrestle. He's got power. He's long. He's rangy. He's dangerous. He's young. But... Uh, MVP, like, MVP's a good striker, so I could see Kevin Holland just being like, yeah, let's fucking strike, dude, and just getting chinned with some goofy shit. So I do want to pick MVP, but I do have to bring up the fact that he is a bit of a can crusher. He is getting fed tiny welterweights, you know, mid-level guys, journeyman guys in Bellator. Again, this is what I'm talking about in jumping around competition with McKinney. This guy loses, like, a title fight to a legit guy in Bellator. And then he's fighting a guy who's like 8-3. and three. He's fighting a guy who's like 17-12. and 12. It just makes no fucking sense. You have no idea how good he actually is. He's not taking those reasonable steps. It's either a complete bum 
or he goes to he goes to a close decision with a decent guy in Bellator or he loses to a decent guy in Bellator right so it's very hard to say where MVP is at because of his can crushing kind of resume and for that reason I do have to consider him one until he beats Kevin Holland if he beats Kevin Holland I mean I think that proves that he's pretty legit and I think you know despite his age if Wonder Boy is doing good at welterweight you know Colby Covington's still a top contender. I know that's totally different, but even Kamaru Usman is still a solid fighter. I don't think welterweight is one of these divisions where you have to be super young to be a top contender. So if MVP beats Kevin Holland, I will consider him a legit fighter. I think he's pretty good. I think he has a good chance. But again, when we're talking can crushes, I'd be an idiot to not mention Michael Venom Page. These are my picks for the top five biggest can crushes currently in the UFC. Who do you think should, belongs on this list? Did I miss anybody really obvious? Who are some fighters that you think are can crushers that maybe most people won't say they are? Let me know in the comments down below, boys. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, go follow me on Instagram at Bedtime MMA. I'm going to be doing a video about Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera very soon as well, as well as my uh, 299 prediction. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.